The first tool I want you to know about is consensus. Consensus is in beta stage, but one thing I really like about it is you can ask a question and get conclusions from research papers. So I think it's gonna be an excellent supplementation to tools like Elicit, and also not relying on one AI tool I think is really important just to kind of weed out any of the biases that may exist in certain tools. So essentially here, look, we'll just choose one of them. So can you reverse aging? We can go now and find different papers which actually address this search term. You can also turn on synthesize, which will give you a summary of all of the different stuff that's actually been um, presented, and it will give you a consensus as well. So this is really good for literature reviews, getting an overall sense of where the research is heading and what the majority of papers are saying. So once again, it acts as a nice summary tool. It acts as another source of information for your literature reviews. So it's really nicely laid out. It's a really sort of like intuitive interface. I think they've done a great job. So consensus.app will be a really important tool in the early stages and the literature finding stages of your research. Staying with like the searching stuff, the second tool I want you to know about is System Pro. Now this is like another illicit. So we can see here, we can ask System Pro about certain things. Unfortunately at the moment, it's limited to health and life sciences, but it will be expanding in the future. So if you like the way this presents the information because it synthesizes statistical results of millions of peer review studies, it cites and links to all of the sources used, and it can also recommend and visualize topics that relate statistically to your search. So let's use one of their certain things. So the impacts of cannabis use, let's just have a look at that. As you can see, it's retrieving relevant studies. It's synthesizing the results from the studies. They're still working on it. And here it is. It's given you a nice little kind of um, literature review of what is going on. It's just a great way to grab that first sort of like handful of papers that you can use then to expand on your search. So here you can see that it's got 198 peer reviewed studies and they are all referenced down here. They've also got it all in like themes. So cannabis use is increasing with psychosis, for example. As you can see, they've got all of the different papers. So they've got 25 studies that support that and the list goes on and on. So a really nice way and a really sort of easy way of getting that literature search done. Incredible. The third tool I want you to know about is Research Buddy. Look at this. Hello, Andrew. That's me. Research a subject. I will. So let's have a look to see we can prepare a literature review of this. So let's have a look for my favorite organic photovoltaic devices. It's given me some options down the bottom. Literature review or one page summary. Let's go liter literary. Literary review. Mm, nice. We're on it. Fantastic. They're doing that and they're going to email once it's ready. Great. They are on it and they're going to send me an email when it's ready. Research Buddy came back to me and you can see here it says your literature review, organic photovoltaic devices. It's a very short literature review. But one thing I like about it is that it's giving me all of these different papers in different themes. So we've got materials and design and processing. Then we've got interface engineering and device physics, characterization and analysis techniques. We've got device architecture and performance. And then overall at the bottom, it's kind of got another a little summary. You can download it as a Word file. So Research Buddy, I think, is actually quite a useful tool, once again, for grabbing all of that information from a wide range of areas. And I love that it's characterized it into different themes. Well done, Research Buddy. Another tool that's fantastic for getting you out of writer's block, I think, is Textero.ai. It gives you pretty good free level and it just allows you to write better with AI. But look, these are the things I actually like about it. If you go in and type organic photovoltaic devices, my research field for my PhD, we can generate for free. And this is where I think it separates out a lot of other type of essay writers is that you can actually put the subject. So here we've actually got uh, chemistry. Chemistry is what I was, oh, chemistry, there we are, is where I was, and you can also put your own custom subject. Target organic photovoltaic uh, devices, you can enter a description, pages, and number of sources. Let's say we want five sources. So in the description, let's just say I want a literature review of the current state of the field. Now I'm clearly just putting a very short prompt, but let's see how it goes. Style, I want it in the MLA, it must be, Less or equal to four, no worries, I'll have four, thanks. It's telling me that I need to wait approximately two minutes and that it's generating my task. And here we can say we've got an essay generation. 
So it is limited by the number of sources, but if you just need to get out of that writer's block stage, I think this could be a useful tool for getting that first kind of like sort of uh, massive text that you need. All right, so for Textero here, I've clicked on preview and it's opened up a Google Docs document. And as you can see, it started off with organic photovoltaic devices and it starts like a literature review. History of OPVs, great. And then it kind of takes a little bit of a weird turn. And that's because I really didn't give it much to work with. But one notice, notable advancement is using this in 2023. That's interesting. I wonder if that actually exists. You can see down here, it's got the actual references. So uh, I need to go to see if this really works. Oh my God, it's an actual real paper. I think after using it for a bit, I've only realized that it's really useful for undergraduate, for getting that first kind of like handhold on different uh, fields. Probably not suitable for massive documents, but a very good start. And I'm actually very impressed with, even though it's got four references, it's not done such a bad job. Another really useful tool is PaperPal. I know I hate editing my papers, especially in an academic way. It's a little bit boring, it's a little bit dense, but here you can sign into PaperPal and their interface is very simple. You just put in your academic text. This is from an abstract of a paper that I'm on. And as you can see here, once I've posted it in, it gives you all of the different options for changing it. This is editing, not generation, but uh, it could be a really good choice for you. And it's got quite a, reasonable free level that you could use. So here we've got redundancy, word choice. It says that we're using techniques again. We've got redundancy, capitalization. We can rephrase it properly. And we've got punctuation, punctuation and article issues. So overall, if you're just looking for that last little kind of uh, cleanup of your paper before submission, this could be a great way of just going in, having a quick check just to make sure there's perfect academic English ready to submit. Very important for people with English as a second language. And to be honest with you, even as English as a first language, academic writing is so dense and horrible to write, it's gonna be useful for anyone. The last tool I think you should know about is Grantable. Grantable is just what it says on the tin, writing grants. It's got a free level, which I like. So you just go to new file, which is up here. You can see I've already done it for one thing. And essentially it talks you through this process. So what would you like to do? You can respond to a prompt, which will draft a response to a prompt with, it, with selected resources. And soon it's got write a letter of interest, which is very important. So here I've said respond to a prompt and I've put in a DECRA prompt, which is a proposal summary. So here I'm just gonna say proposal summary and all of that. And what it will do is actually interpret that when giving you a response. And then I've said, okay, this is what the project aims to understand, blah, blah, blah. You can also give it additional instructions. You click continue um, and you, then you can provide any source material, which I think is really good. So you can manually add text or whatever you want it to reference or any context you wanna give it, which is fantastic. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna say auto search. And then this is what it's kicked out. This project aims to analyze survival stories, blah, blah, blah. So a really great way of just getting that first edit and the first draft of different sections of your grant done. So won't be super useful, I think, for the detail section of your work. That's gonna rely on you. But all of the other stuff, like the summary and all of the other admin stuff you need to do, a tool like this can be very, very useful. Good. So there we have it. There are the extra tools I think you should know about if you're in academia, a student, or just interested in research in general and need to produce content. These tools are coming on leaps and bounds. And I think over the next few years, we will see these become a normal part of academic writing and academic career. So you need to start using them. You need to start understanding what's out there. There's no point doing the grunt work anymore if you don't need to. Obviously, you need to check everything AI does. You need to check everything that AI gives you. But overall, the generation component of an academic workflow now can be done for you. And uh, I think that's where we will all end up as a field because why would we go back to the other way if this is doing a perfectly good job? I'd love to know your thoughts. 
All right, then there are more ways that you can engage with me. The first way is to sign up to my newsletter. Head over to andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. And when you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I've used, the podcast I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content available for free. So go sign up now and also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, I've got my resource pack, and I've also got a blog and a forum there as well. And everything is there to help make sure academia works for you. All right then, I'll see you in the next video.